Thank you very much, Colleen, and uh, welcome everyone to the uh, Planning Advisory and Adjustment Committee meeting being held on Wednesday, June 23rd. And as you've noticed, it's being done electronically. At this particular time, I'd like to call the meeting to order. First item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. And uh, you've all received the agenda. Um, members, are there any additions or errors? Okay, moved by Bob that we accept the uh, agenda. Looking for a seconder, Christine Reavy. Further comments? All in favor? Carried. All right, the second uh, item, uh, which is number three in your agenda, is the approval of the minutes of the meeting we held on May 19th, 2021. Again, you received these minutes. And uh, um, or were there any errors or any omissions? Seeing none, looking for someone to move the minutes of the uh, last planning advisory and adjustment committee meeting held May 19th, looking for approval. Tanya, seconded by Marie-Josée Levesque. Any other comments? If not, all in favor? And it's carried unanimously. We now go to item number four, which is uh, disclosure of pecuniary interests. Are there any items on the agenda that members of the committee would gain financially or otherwise? We have to have a disclosure at this point, seeing that no one is declaring a, uh, a disclosure of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof, we'll, get, we'll go on now to new business. The first item in the new business is a um, deals with a property at 955 McKay Street. Um, Chris Caswell and Glenview Iron and Metal are the applicants. Uh, this is a zoning bylaw amendment application. And the fact that it's a zoning uh, bylaw amendment, it means that uh, our decision here uh, is advisory, of course, like they all are, most of them. It's an advisory decision that would be going to uh, city council one way or the other. Now, um, I'm going to ask uh, Colleen to uh, present her report on this particular application. Thank you, Chairman Levisser. So the developer, as you introduced, is Chris Castle of Glenview Iron and Metal, and his planner, Tracy Zander, they're both here this evening uh, virtually on the Zoom. Um, Mr. Castle would like to rezone 955 McKay Street only for the purposes of a recycling depot or transfer station. Both 945 and 955 McKay are presently zoned general industrial. The zone for 955 McKay Street does not permit a recycling depot or transfer station. So 945 and 955 McKay Street consists of approximately 16.8 acres, 16 acres of land with approximately 900 feet of frontage along McKay Street. The property being rezoned is only 955 McKay Street and it consists of approximately 6.29 acres with 400 feet of frontage on McKay Street. This property is a through lot with frontage on both McKay and Cecilia Street. Access to the property would be from McKay Street only. The site would have a gated entrance onto McKay Street with a scale facility and office space. The site plan also illustrates open storage areas on concrete pads for the various sorted materials, as well as a scale to weigh the materials. Scrap metal would be received by the public and the Glenview staff would sort it and store it either indoors or outdoors as needed. A retail reuse recycled area for metal and steel is also proposed. Also, there will be an indoor uh, storage area for end of life vehicles. There will be no processing of any materials on this site. The property was previously used as a lumber mill. So the applicant would like to rezone um, a portion. So 955 McKay Street to include a recycling depot transfer station. The property separating 955 uh, McKay Street from, Deuville, from the Deuville Drive uh, residential dwellings is municipally known as 945 McKay Street and is owned by the applicant. 
piece of land um, at 945 McKay Street has a frontage of 513 feet along McKay Street and is approximately 10.29 acres in size. So this does not, again, form part of the rezoning application. The property that forms part of the rezoning has a 400 foot frontage on McKay Street and a 409 foot frontage on Cecilia Street, again, with an area of 6.29 meters. The property to be rezoned is bounded to the north by existing M1 uses, by Deuville Drive itself, and by a residential subdivision of single detached dwelling houses. It's bounded to the west by existing industrial buildings, such as the cannabis uh, production retail facility and the Westburn. It's, uh, also, um, it's also bounded by two uh, dwelling units. It's bounded to the south by uh, existing industrial units, Sunbelt Rental and Perlator, and it's bounded to the east by existing industrial uses, Eddy Industrial Products and the Pembroke Regional Hospital Laundry and Storage Facility. It's also um, bounded by vacant residentially zoned land. So by rezoning only 955 McCray Street, it will allow a greater separation distance of the existing residential dwelling units from the proposed recycling depot transfer station. The city's industry, uh, sorry, the city's official plan designates the land as industrial, which means the predominant use in the area so designated shall be for industrial uses, including warehousing, processing, manufacturing, assembly, and storage. Section 3.7 of the official plan speaks to noise and vibration, noiding a noise or vibration test or study may be required by council. The applicant completed a noise study to determine its consistency with the official plan and the Ministry of the Environment, Conservation and Parks noise guidelines. Section 4.6 of the official plan notes that industrial uses will continue to be a significant component of Pembroke's economic base. And the intent of the plan is to encourage light and medium industrial uses, such as class one and class two industrial uses. So the proposed use of a scrap metal recycling de depot or transfer station would be considered a class two use. The MOE guidelines categorize industrial uses as class one, class two, or class three. Based on their potential for noise, dust, and odor emissions, and other criteria such as the general level of traffic and activity at the site. To assist in determining the compatibility of these industrial uses with sensitive, with surrounding sensitive land uses, the guideline provides a recommended separation distance away from sensitive land uses, such as residential. So if it's a class one, you're looking at a recommended separation distance between 20 meters and 70 meters. So for a class two, which we're classifying this use as, it would be between 70 meters and 300 meters. So uh, we have classified this as a class two based on the fact that a scrap metal recycling depot or transfer station will have indoor and outdoor storage. It would emit some levels of noise, vibration, odor, and dust. The operations could be daytime and evening with frequent movement of products, which includes trucks, backup beepers, excavators, loaders, and skid steers. And the facility could have heavy truck traffic i.e. transports to, to pick up or drop off products. Uh, the developer uh, indicated there would not be more than two to three transports on site in a day. Therefore, these characteristics allow a scrap metal recycling depot or transfer station to be classified as a class two industrial facility with a minimum separation distance of 70 meters to a maximum distance of 300 meters. So it should be emphasized that MOE only provides recommendations, as these guidelines also state that the actual influence area for a particular facility will be site-specific and can be reduced through industrial controls. The zoning bylaw states where there's an influence area, in this case 70 meters to 300 meters, is reduced in accordance with the official plan, the separation distance between the industrial use and the sensitive land use shall not be reduced to less than 70 meters and shall be measured from property line to property line. The separation distance between the existing homes on Deuville Drive and 955 McKay Street is approximately a minimum of 111 meters up to approximately 150 meters, with the exception of the vacant residentially zoned lands on Cecilia Street. The proposed development will include fencing around the subject property along Cecilia and Deuville Drive, in addition, 
to adding a landscape buffer strip along the fence. So with the fencing, the buffer strip and the separation setbacks, it has regard, the development has regard for the sensitive land uses in the area. The official plan also proposes to mitigate adverse effects. So uh, as well, uh, they were, will add a landscape buffer along their board fence to mitigate noise and provide a visual barrier between the proposed development and the existing residential uses. Also, the noise study indicated the noise output from the proposed development will be below the noise pollution control guideline limit for daytime operations. So with these mitigation measures in place, it, 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 it speaks to the 70 meter separation distance. Um, okay, so section uh, 4.6.2.3 of the official plan speaks to sensitive land uses. There is a residential parcel of land within the 70 meters uh, separation distance, but this land is currently vacant. This vacant residential zone land is bounded to the south by existing industrial uses, the Eddy industrial products, and is across the street from 945 and 955 McKay Street, which is also, as you know, designated as industrial. All other existing sensitive land uses exceed the separation distance of 70 meters. There will be open storage on the lot, but it will be screened uh, from adjacent properties and from any public street. And 4.6.2.8 states that industrial traffic shall be directed to and from industrial areas by designated arterial, collector, and highways. So the industrial traffic will be directed away from Deauville Drive as there will be no access to the site from Cecilia Street. Further access will be directed towards Townline Road, then onto Paul Martin Drive to Highway 17. Townline Road is designated as a collector road and Paul Martin Drive is designated as an arterial road in the official plan. And again, the official plan talks about adequate buffering between industrial uses and adjacent residential uses. And we've talked about the buffering that's in place. So based on all of those points, the proposed development meets the intent of the city's official plan. The zoning bylaw zones the property as M1, general industrial, but there must be a rezoning here today for um, the use to be permitted for a metal recycling depot transfer station. A uh, recycling depot transfer station is defined in our city zoning bylaw presently, and it's defined as a recycling depot or transfer station. Um, uh, it's a temporary storage site for clean materials such as glass, paper, cardboard, plastic, metal, and other similar products, which will be transferred to another location for reuse. This definition does not include any other type of waste management system or waste disposal site. The proposal for 955 McKay Street is that the site would be used as a scrap metal recycling feeder yard to the main Glenview iron and metal operations near Smith Falls. The developer is seeking a location in the city that would act as a storage and feeder site for metal products for their, scrap, for their existing scrap metal recycling facility just outside of Smith Falls. The proposed site meets the lot area, lot frontage, lot depth and setback requirements in an M1 zone. Section 14.3 of the zoning bylaws states that open storage is permitted in the rear yard only, and it shall comply with the yard setbacks for a main building. And it shall be, uh, it shall not occupy more than 35% of the lot area, nor shall it see twice the ground floor area of the main building on the lot. The open storage uh, shall also be concealed from view by the street by OPEC fences or walls. Also, the zoning bylaw requires a buffer strip where a front yard or exterior side yard abuts the street and land on the opposite side of the street is in a residential zone. So the buffer strip shall be maintained at a minimum width of 10 feet. The proposed development is seeking an exception to the open storage provision provisions to allow open storage within an interior side yard along with the rear yard. However, this interior side yard abuts an existing residential use that would be Sunbelt and Perlator. Further relief is also required from the zoning bylaw in regards to the open storage. So it would, it would exceed 35% of the lot area. In fact, it would cover 41.69% of the lot area. However, the developers are proposing an eight foot high board fence along the property lines of Cecilia Street and Deauville Drive. And they had agreed to reduce 
their footprint of their uh, transfer, transfer uh, station. Um, they were originally looking at it to be 945 McKay and 955, but reduced it all into the one lot of 955. The parking requirements are met. A noise study has been conducted by pension consultants. So an acoustic assessment of 955 McKay Street was completed. The, uh, in the report, the facility will be operational 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday to Friday and from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Saturdays. It will be closed on Sundays. The report took into account two air conditioners, one loader, one scrap metal handler, one skid steer, and one truck movement path. The proposed business does not include stamping presses or large rotating equipment, which means there's no need for a vibration study. The acoustic assessment report concluded that even under the worst case uh, noise scenario, noise levels are shown to be below the noise pollution control guidelines class two guideline limit for daytime operation. Therefore, the facility is expected to be in compliance with the Ministry of the Environment, Conservation and Parks noise requirements. A phase two environmental site assessment was completed. And after taking soil samples and groundwater samples, found that there was no further subsurface investigation was required for this site. This site is in compliance and is, in cons and is consistent with the provincial policy statement in that it uses land and resources widely to ensure the effective use of infrastructure and public service facilities. It also uh, states that new development should occur adjacent to existing built up areas and it should be compatible with the existing land uses. And the PPS also states that planning authorities shall promote economic development and competitiveness by providing for a mix and range of employment uses, as well as sewage and water services shall be um, on municipal water services and municipal uh, sewer services, and this development would be connected to that. The provincial policy statement also states transportation system systems should be provided and they will be on a collector, then an arterial road, then onto Highway 17. And the PPS also states that long-term economic prosperity should be supported by promoting opportunities for economic development and community investment readiness. So the proposed development is consistent with the Provincial Policy Statement 2020 in that it represents intensification of development, promotes efficient land use and development patterns, and uses the existing infrastructure system within the City of Pembroke. Efficient land use and development patterns support sustainability by promoting strong, livable, healthy, and resilient communities and facilitate economic growth while ensuring public health and safety. So based on all of that information, just to summarize, the proposed use of a scrap metal recycling depot transfer station at 955, McKay Street meets the intent of the official plan and is consistent with the policies of the provincial policy statement. A noise study has been completed and states that noise levels will be below provincial standards. Uh, the Ministry of the Environment, Conservation and Parks, Land Use Compatibility Guideline, along with the city's official plan and zoning policies in regards to separation of industrial uses and sensitive land uses can be met or exceeded. And um, it, all of the uh, side yard, uh, front yard and uh, lot area and lot frontage requirements are met. Um, and all parking requirements are met. I will turn it over to you, um, Chairman Leviser. Well, th thank you very much, uh, Colleen, for a very detailed and lengthy report, but very inclusive of a lot of the questions that individuals may have. And, and basically, um, all requirements from the province regarding noise study, regarding sensitivity, regarding uh, a lot of the things that they, they look for have been met. And, and we're merely looking at the application when it's asking to, change, to add a use to the M1 zone. Now, um, well, have you uh, received any submissions that were uh, that uh, concerning this application, I'm aware of one, maybe perhaps you could go through any others if we got them. Mr. Chairman, uh, we, we have received a, a submission, which I will read to the committee right now. Uh, this is from Renee and Val Van Dalen at 193 Duville Drive. 
Included below in quotations is part of my previous email to Mayor Mike LeMay from April 7th, 2021. Quote, another scrapyard within Pembroke city limits is totally unnecessary, especially one next to a very nice residential neighborhood. They are suggesting this will be a small operation, but once the foot is in the door, they would likely expand on the sizable property they have already bought. So there's already a lack of trust as to their long-term outlook. In the strongest language appropriate in an email, we and our neighbors do oppose any such use of this property, end quote. We are still of the same opinion and even more concerned now because of the way the explanatory note describes the planned operation. Now there is the added clean waste materials, glass, paper, cardboard, plastic, and added at the end as if to minimize it, metal. Most of these waste materials are handled at the Ottawa Valley Waste Recovery Center south of Pembroke, so why is this even needed? The operation of this site will increase noise and increase traffic on Deuville and Town Line since large commercial vehicles and tractor trailers in particular prefer not to turn on at McKay and Town Line but come down Cecilia to Deuville and then Town Line instead. Should the adjustment go ahead, we would like the planned extension of the road from Quarry to Paul Martin Drive next to Pemco Steel be included as a condition of granting the adjustment. Note also there was a petition in the past, brackets rejected, to ban commercial traffic on Deuville. Your planning committee may want to revisit that as well. We will likely, we will not likely be at the June 23rd meeting online or otherwise, but would like this email of our concerns to be documented in the minutes. Sincerely yours, Renee and Val Van Dalen at 193 Deuville. Thank you very much, Owen. Um, any other calls or uh, emails concerning this application in opposition? Uh, we have only had a single other informational call. Uh, no, uh, no support or opposition was registered from that call. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, is there anyone present or who is online that uh, represents this application, Colleen? Uh, yes, I believe Tracy Zander, the planner uh, for Mr. Castle, is online. There she is, yes. Okay, welcome, uh, Tracy, to our meeting, and uh, we're prepared to uh, listen to your comments. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. Great. Thank you. Uh, my name is Tracy Zander. I'm a professional planner from Zander Plan. I've been working with the uh, property owners on this project and working closely with your staff over the last few months. Um, th Mr. Chair, you summed it up quite nicely. Uh, it's an industrial property and the request before the committee this evening is to add a use to an existing industrial property. So uh, there's already a wide range of industrial uses permitted here. My clients are simply wanting to add the uh, recycling transfer facility onto part of the site. As your staff have pointed out, this would only apply to the uh, property at 955 McKay Street. Uh, I, I'm going to assume the committee has a, had an opportunity to see our sketch. It does show the 70 meter setback that your staff spoke to. Uh, from the abutting residential uses. So you can see that aside from the vacant lot uh, on Cecilia Street that staff mentioned, uh, the proposed use is significantly more than 70 meters from the subdivision on Duville Drive. Um, and uh, as uh, we worked with staff, we, we sketched the plan in such a way that the, uh, the boundary of the exception zone that's being requested would be fenced so the concern from the neighbor about this use spilling onto the rest of the property really uh, isn't founded. Uh, there, there will be a requirement which you can implement through site plan control to uh, fence the limit of the transfer facility so it can't really spill over. This is, uh, I think, a good opportunity to kind of revitalize, reuse and underutilized property. Uh, my clients will, will be able to reuse some of the buildings that were there uh, and, and, and you know, bring a bit of uh, economic activity to a site that isn't being used to its full potential right now. Uh, and as you've heard from staff, the traffic uh, route is there for truck traffic to leave the, the area without uh, interfering with the residential neighborhood. 
Um, and there's uh, lots of room for buffering and screening. As staff have indicated, my clients are prepared to put some vegetation screening and fencing to, to hide, to screen the land uses, particularly on the Cecilia Street side. Uh, so uh, I think uh, this is a great reuse of this property on, on a property that already has a wide range of industrial uses that are permitted. So uh, I'm pleased to answer any questions you may have. And I think my client, uh, Chris Castles, on the call or in the chat as well, if you have other questions. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Tracy. And uh, perhaps uh, if there are any questions that some of the members might like to pose to you, uh, to you um, I hope you would be pleased to respond. Okay, okay at this particular time, I would ask uh, uh, members, and uh, starting with Christine Reeve, any questions to our planner or to uh, Ms. Rander? Christine? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I don't have any questions, actually, but I just wanted to let uh, committee know that in the winter, uh, Colleen Owen and myself did tour the, the site. It is huge. Um, I was really surprised. And um, at that time, Mr. Castle uh you know had one thought about the, the plans for the site but when we were meeting and, and looking at everything um he did change so that it could be more palatable to um to the neighboring people on newville um i think he's really uh doing something or, or mitigating some of the factors that they're concerned about by, you know, adding buffer site, fencing, and, um, and uh, you know, the noise study has said that that's not going to be an issue. I think the one thing, and I know during our tour, I asked him, um, is if he considered his, his business or proposed business to be green, because that's something that um, council is very sensitive to now in terms of any type of, of development, particularly industrial. Uh, we do have the Climate Advisory Committee. Uh, the city has declared a climate uh, um, emergency. And when, when I talked to, to Mr. Castle, he said, yes, you know, we're recycling. We're taking these, these items, metal, we're we're draining fluids in a in a very safe manner, and then um, sending metal away to a to a place where it can be reused. So I I did feel good about that. That you know we do have something that is a green initiative. And um, Colleen did have a, a paragraph within a report that did highlight that. So really. Um, <clears throat> In terms of economic development, I would welcome um, this, this uh, industry into our lands and um, hope to see some good things come of it. That's all I really have to say. Thanks. Well, thank you very much, Christine. I think that the uh, very valid and good point uh, made by, uh, by the Christine, in that, uh, you know, the emphasis on uh, recycling, the re emphasis on reusing, the emphasis on green, I think, in the ecosystem and so on, I think that that's very important. It's a, I think that that's a selling point. Uh, it could be a selling point in the, no matter where this goes at this time. Uh, I'll ask Tanya next. Tanya, have you got any questions either to Colleen or to uh, Ms. Zander? I don't think so. I think basically they've done their due diligence. They've done their noise study. Um, there's always been big trucks and everything going through there. It's industrial, the industrial part of the industrial area. Um, so no, I have no questions. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Marie Josie Levesque, any questions, comments? Um, I just want to uh, say that I was very pleased to hear, well, A, to see that um, there was a lot of due diligence done already on this project. Um, and also to hear Ms. Anders say that the green fencing or the green shelter um, uh, screening is, is considered. I think that would be uh, better than just boarding fences. Uh, this being said, I wanted to ask what, um, what are the risks of soil contamination as a result of this activity and what are the mitigating 
uh, measures that the business owners are considering to prevent that. Ms. Zander, answer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. The answer might be better coming from my client since he operates a similar facility on a bit larger scale near Smith Falls. Um, so Chris Castle is here in some form. I'm not sure if he can, he has a microphone and he can respond, but he can tell you about the uh, measures that they use in Smith Falls. Colleen, do we have uh, Chris on the phone? Mr. Chair, I believe he's just in the chat room because uh, I think he could not get audio or video. Uh, Colleen? Oh, we can't hear you. Okay, so um, I don't know if he um, has the ability to speak. He said earlier that he didn't have a microphone um, and he didn't have a camera, so I don't know. But I, I think maybe, Tracy, if you can... Um, yeah, so he's saying he can hear us, but he cannot speak. Tracy, maybe if you want to correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they were putting concrete pads down um, over the ground so that the, the scrap metal and the other recycling would be laying on the concrete pads. Is that correct? Uh, yes, through you, Mr. Chair, that is correct. The intent is to have concrete surface, so they'll deal with uh, uh, drainage and runoff within the site through you know, meeting the provincial and federal standards for man managing uh, spills and contamination. And I know they have quite a, a regulated system for draining fluids from vehicles and storing that on site. So uh, outside of saying they have to comply with the you know provincial and federal standards, uh, that you know, that's how they will manage. Uh, Chris has indicated, you may be able to see the chat, uh, there's already some asphalt there and they will concrete areas. So it will be contained on hard surface, not kind of uh, leaching into soil or, uh, you know, uh, groundwater um, on a dirt or soil site. It'll be, it'll be hard surface. Okay, thank you. Thank you very that's much, uh, Mary Jose. Um, Vice Chair, uh, Bob, questions, comments? Click yourself on. Oh, there. Okay. okay. Sorry about that. Anyway, it appears they've done all their homework on this, and Colleen did uh, an extensive report on it, and I'm uh, quite happy to see that uh, coming on to the industrial area anyway. That's okay, it. thank you very much. Um, I... Uh, I really don't have any questions. I think that the the, the, the report from our planner was uh, was excellent. I think that, uh, I mean, we can summarize in, in a way that every item that should be considered and every study and every test has been done. And not only that, uh, there's going to be a site plan agreement. And Colleen, could you uh, confirm that? There will be a site plan agreement to this if it gets approved. Yes, there will be a site plan agreement if approved. If the zoning bylaw is approved, there will be a site plan agreement before a building permit can be uh, uh, applied for. And uh, I gather from your report that there was going to be uh, along Duville Drive, where there seems to be the most amount of concern from residents, uh, there will be uh, an eight foot fence along with a buffering zone and what would be in that buffering zone what will it constitute vegetation or what yes uh through you mr chairman it would be 10 feet wide and it would be you know vegetation um uh, you know whatever but that would be part of the site plan where we would agree to what's being put in there okay Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, I believe at this particular time, we've all had an opportunity to question uh, Ms. Zander and Chris uh, has uh, contributed by uh, putting out a couple of little messages and want you to know, Chris, we did pick them up. And uh, at this time, I would uh, ask for a motion regarding this application. Okay, moved by Christine Rizzi, Rizzi that the application be accepted as presented uh, seconded by Tanya. Further comments? Seeing none. All in favor? Okay, carried. Um, 
Xander at this particular time. Uh, we are, uh, because it's, um, it's a zoning bylaw amendment, we are an advisory body. And uh, this uh, application will come before council. Uh, Ms. Reevy, who is our, our uh, connection to the council, will be presenting the information from this particular meeting and the fact that it was approved. Um, I would suggest that you be present at the, um, the council for the next public meeting, which will be held on Tuesday, July 13th at City Hall at six o'clock. That's Tuesday, July 13th at City Hall at six o'clock. At this particular time, then the application comes before City Council and the final decision is made. You should be aware it is not, I say a final decision in brackets, it can be appealed. And maybe I could ask Colleen to just explain the appeal process if it goes that way. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, so if uh, council does approve the zoning bylaw, there's a 20 day appeal period. And if there is a, um, a, a, an appeal received, then we will have to file all the information to the Ontario Land Tribunal. It's no longer called LPAT as of uh, June 1st. So now it's the Ontario Land Tribunal. Okay, now what happened to me? This uh, okay. Chairman Levisser? Yep, I got a commercial here. <laughs> Okay, we can hear you. So if you want to continue. We can hear you, Mr. Chairman. We can see you. I can hear you, Owen, but I don't see anything. What I ended up with is a uh, take a health and wellness break on Zoom. Uh, <laughs> you you, you should you should be able to just hit the X button on, on your computer, Mr. Levisser. For that little <laughs> pop-up window. E e either way, we can see you and hear you. So if, if you would like to continue, we, we can hear you. Yeah, we can go. Okay, so maybe then um, I think that uh, closes this for the first application um, at 955 McKay Street. So uh, we can say goodbye to uh, Ms. Sander and Mr. Kessel at this point. Very good. Thank, thank you. you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Okay, good night and thank you very much. Um, okay, we have the second application. Um, I'm kind of wondering here, uh, I'm running blind, but uh, did you want to go ahead with this and start it, uh, Colleen? Yes. Okay. So um, this is a rezoning for 358 Pembroke Street East. And the present zoning of the property is R2, residential type 2-1. And the applicant would like to rezone it to a residential type 4-2 to allow for the building to be converted to 10 apartment units with reduced lot frontage, exterior side yard, dwelling unit area, and parking. The official plan designates the property as residential, which means the predominant use of the land in the areas so designated shall be for all types of residential dwellings. The official plan goes on to say that medium and high density residential uses shall be located in close proximity to schools, parks, and local shopping facilities. The existing apartment building is a uh, it, the proposed apartment building is located close to the Champlain Discovery Public School, Fellows High School, Highview Public School, Kinsman Park, and the city's downtown court. The official plan also encourages all forms of residential in intensification that create a potential supply of new units. Residential intensification will be encouraged in the built up areas of the city where there is sufficient existing or planned infrastructure to accommodate such development. The official plan goes on to state it is the intention of the council to permit the conversion of larger single detached dwellings or non-residential buildings where they practically converted to increase the housing supply. In the conversion of the building, the proponent must determine sufficiency of off street parking, compliance with the building code, increased accessibility for the disabled and compatibility with adjacent land uses and the adequacy of municipal services. 
Conversions of designated heritage buildings will be permitted where the conversion retains the integrity of the heritage or architectural features of the building. 358 Pembroke Street East is not a designated heritage building, but the owners are attempting to preserve the architectural features of the building. The building was built as a single detached dwelling house and then converted to a commercial use with some apartment buildings. By converting the interior of the large building to 10 units, this will increase the supply of housing in the city of Pembroke, plus encourage intensification and would meet the intent of the official plan. If the rezoning application is approved, the building will have to comply with the building code. The applicants are preparing to submit a building permit should this rezoning be approved. The present zone only permits two dwelling units and a professional office. The professional office is no longer operating at this location and this building has sat vacant for several years. The developer wishes to convert the interior of the building to allow 10 units. The property is bounded to the east, west, and south by existing residential uses. There is a multi-unit apartment building immediately south of 358 Pembroke Street East. Two of the four residential uses uh, on the east side of Cecilia Street are multi-units. And the property to the west is a single detached dwelling house. It is bounded to the north by highway commercial uh, zoned lands, such as the Money Mart. The proposed use of a 10-unit apartment building would be compatible within the existing neighborhood. The housing form for 358 Pembroke Street East is similar in size, scale, massing, and architectural elements. No addition is proposed to the building, and the interior will be converted to 10 apartment dwelling units. Relief is required from the lot frontage, exterior side yard, privacy yard setbacks, buffer strips, and dwelling unit areas. So the uh, exterior side yard and the lot frontage have existed this way for many years. So was the privacy yard setback. Um, the parking lot is located right next to the exterior wall at the rear of the building. So there should be a 25 foot privacy yard between the parking area and the exterior wall. However, this has existed in this way for many years. Um, there should be a 10 foot or 9.85 buffer strip whenever there's four off-street parking spaces located in a yard that abuts a residential zone. Again, um, there is no buffering along the west and south sides of the property. However, there is a property privacy fence along the interior lot line, along the western lot line of the parking area that abuts the single detached dwelling house. In regards to dwelling unit areas, the zoning bylaw requires a minimum of 500 square feet for a one bedroom apartment unit. And there are six apartment units that are less than that requirement. Um, so they range in a deficient size range from 0.2% to 13%. The zoning bylaw requires 1.5 parking spaces per dwelling unit. So therefore 15 parking spaces are required and 14 are actually pro provided. So there's relief from one parking space is required. The previous use of a commercial office required more parking spaces than the proposed residential uses. Therefore, there was a parking deficiency with the commercial use. There is no access to the lot from Pembroke Street East. Access is from Cecilia Street, and this is the preferred option since Pembroke Street East is an arterial road, and there's a signalized intersection at Pembroke Street East and Cecilia Street. The property meets the lot area, front yard depth, rear yard depth, and interior side yard requirements. It also meets the 35% landscaped open space requirement. And it's serviced by municipal water and sanitary sewer. And it meets the intent of the provincial policy statement where it states an appropriate range and mix of residential uses shall be accommodated for. And it also states that planning authorities shall identify and promote opportunities for intensification and redevelopment where taking into account existing infrastructure. So the proposed 10 unit apartment building is taking into account existing building stock and thereby promoting a mix of residential uses and increasing the supply of housing in this area. Therefore, it would appear that this intent, this application meets the intent of the provincial policy statement. Therefore, the proposed use of a 10 unit apartment building at 358 Pembroke Street East meets the intent of the official plan is consistent with the policies in the provincial policy statement. Relief is required for a reduced exterior side yard, lot frontage, dwelling unit area, 
parking for one parking space and privacy yard setbacks. No addition to the building is proposed. Only the interior will be converted to permit the 10 dwelling units. All other setback lot area and lot depth provisions are met. Okay, thank you very much, Colleen. Um, is there um, anyone from Sleep Well to uh, present the application or add any comments? Uh, Mr. Conrad Poole from Sleep Well Property Management was on, on the meeting, uh, but I now have him available by cell phone if the committee has any questions of him. Okay, I know there are some individuals that are present and uh, would like to speak uh, to the application. So I would invite uh, uh, Ms. Irwin or, and Mr. Leonard to, uh, to speak at this time. Mr. Leonard? You have to un there we, there go. we go. Sorry. I'm sorry about that. I, I was good. Uh, hi, Mr. Mr. Poole. You are you are at the uh, the planning advisory and adjustment committee meeting. And we have uh, we have uh, Mr. Robert Leonard uh, to here to ask you a couple questions. Sure, sure. Thanks. Thanks for the call as well. I, I didn't know must have fallen through the cracks, but thank you as well. Is this Owen? Speaking, yes. Yeah, thanks for reaching out to Michelle because I was just driving around here in Ottawa and Michelle got sent me a text. So thanks for reaching out no, to her. No, no problem. Thank you for being here. Okay, yeah. go ahead, Mr. Leonard. Uh, thank you. And thank you, Ms. Lavasier. Um, we, my wife and I, do not have any objection, but I'd just like to make a comment and then I'll let you guys get on with business. We received information on this matter on June the 1st. Didn't give us much time to react. Now, in listening to the previous application, okay, the detail, and the beautiful detail, that, and I, I commend the, um, the lady who uh, gave that detail. Colleen. 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 Okay. I would have liked that kind of detail, okay, on the application on McKay six months ago, because I am concerned about trucks going up and down Cecilia. Now for the application on Cecilia, uh, on Pembroke Street, uh, 258, while I have no uh, objections at this point, because I don't see any valid objections, um, I am concerned about the fact that we did not receive any detail. Uh, but you say six one bedroom apartments, uh, are there two? Ten. There's 10, apart oh, uh, 10 apartments, 10 units. Okay, but uh, I heard mention of six uh, single units. Again, not a lot of detail. So as a, con as a resident and a taxpayer in Pembroke, we do not seem to be given enough information in time. And my only comment is to council and to the, to the, the, the good people that support council is please, keep us informed and that's all i have to and, say and just if i may um uh when when my husband said that we got the information june the first we actually did not get any information it was one of our neighbors that said about five days ago did you hear about this meeting regarding the apartment building and at that point he said something about i don't know 500 units or whatever um but uh, we did not get anything. We did not get any information at 362 yeah, Supple Street. I, I quoted June the 1st, but because I'm, I'm reading my photocopy of the letter. That one of our that neighbors we got five days ago. Gave, her, gave us. So I think you're letting us down, okay, by not providing information to your, your voters and taxpayers. So that, and that's all I'm going to say. Anyway, yeah, we're not we're, we're, we're not here to object. We didn't come here to, uh, you know, complain. We just wanted to make a point. This is very it's been very informative. And uh, for the gentleman from Sleepwell, we apologize. <laughs> Welcome to the neighborhood. <laughs> um, we are only a block away from from your from your building. And it is a beautiful building. I'm sure you'll do very well there. And congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I, uh, I can take some responsibility maybe on the, um, I, I wouldn't put the blame on the city because I, I'm, uh, 
managing this project. Tony Lantier has done an excellent job. He's my. We lost him. Yeah, we lost him. <laughs> I'm going to say goodbye, folks. <laughs> but uh, we uh, we started the process with uh, what we thought would be a smaller endeavor and turned into uh, a much bigger one, which we had to backtrack and and do some extra steps with the city. So it's not this. This is not on the city. This would be more on me, just for um, Miss uh, Ga you know taking a, a gauge on it was not what I had expected. But you'll be. I think you'll be quite happy with the end results. It's uh, it's going to be uh, left on the exterior to look uh, exactly what it has always looked like, except the rotten wood will be changed. We've got new windows, but I, I really love the look of the building and that that um, that uh, curb appeal that it has, and that's all going to remain. and And inside, we're building ten uh, very high end, very luxurious apartments that will only attract uh, what we, you know, what we think will be uh, good quality tenants and, uh, and we'll look forward to the completion in, in another couple of months. Well, that's great. We, that, we that's what we've heard too. We appreciate that very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So Mr. Leviser, can you, uh, can you hear us? <laughs> Maybe. Is he gone? No. Okay, Bob. <laughs> Bob, would you be able to take over? I can't. Chairman Leviser has left. I, he must have had some technical difficulties. Okay. Well, uh, I guess our next step is uh, really to uh, get comments from the committee themselves. There's nobody else uh, online, is there? No, there's not. Okay. Uh, I don't have who all's at, at the uh, meeting, but uh, it, I guess we could uh, start out with uh, uh, Colleen, if you could tell me who's who all's on there. Well, you can't see I, anybody. I okay. Have, have okay, so picture. Tanya, Tanya, do you have any comments? Uh, no, I think it, it was a multi-unit building at one time before the professional office went in there. Like I remember as a kid going in there and there was apartments everywhere. So I think, and the city, you know, being in the, in the job that I am, there's a diehard need for rental properties. So I have no issues with it. Okay, thanks. Uh, Marie-Josée? I don't have questions or comments other than to say that I'm glad that someone is going to look after this building, which is um, being renovated. Well, the, I saw the new windows in and I thought, well, that's a good sign because I don't live too far from there. So I'm glad to see that this building is going to be taken care of. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Reavy. Thank you. Yes, it's, I'm thrilled that, that something quite remarkable is going to be done with that building. It is a gorgeous building, and um, I appreciate the school's uh, work taking this on. I do have one question for you, though, Conrad, um, and it's my, my always question when we have um, housing development. Will there be an accessible unit um, at all? I know it's difficult in these older places, but... I just want to throw that question out to you. Uh, I, it's, it's pretty hard on, it's difficult on this particular property. Um, so at, at this time, no, there, there won't be an accessible unit. There's only two on the ground floor. Uh, it's a lot of stairs, these, these old buildings. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's up and down, right? Um, on, the, on a positive note, my, my plans, personally for my developments in Pembroke, uh, take me to the, the project, which is just after this one, which will be the old police station, which, uh, which I purchased from the city uh, uh, maybe three or four years back. It has accessibility. And my plans with the with that building is a is a 14 unit residential. Uh, I'm going to convert that, I'm looking to convert that from commercial to, to residential. And that will have some accessibility units uh, in it, it's already got the. It already has the front uh, wheelchair uh, ramp accessible. Um, and, you know, it's already installed, so so you'll have some in that property. But this one on 
at 358 is, is just not designed for it. Fair. Thank you so much and good luck with your development. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. I guess, uh, I'm I, back. I get, oh, you're back. <laughs> okay, Bob, I, did you uh, take over the chair? Yes, just for, temporarily, okay. yeah. Okay, very Go good. Ahead. I'm sorry about that. I lost video, so I had to play around. Anyways, I'm back. Okay, uh, I uh, I assume that uh, Miss Irwin, you've had your questions uh, responded to. Is there anything else? No. Okay. Councilor uh, uh, Chairman Levisser, we we've gone through committee members. The only committee members left to make comments are yourself and Bob Hughes. Okay, Bob, you want to go ahead and make some comments, Bob? I'm lo I'm losing contact there off and on now too. Hello, hello. Uh, I'm asking for your comments on the uh, on the application. Okay. No, I uh, I uh, I don't have any comments uh, about it at all. Okay, thank you. Um, I've uh, I've been able to hear most of the things, so I've heard everything, and. Uh, um, the application, of course, has been presented. I think uh, I want to thank uh, Christine for uh, filling in uh, a lot of the information, as well as the planner and Owen. Um, so uh, at this particular time, I'm ready for a motion regarding this application. Moved by Hello. Bob, seconded by Tanya. Further comments? Okay, this is a motion. Uh, as uh, in approval of the application as presented by our planner. All in favor? Carried. Uh, thank you very much. And as I've indicated, because this is a zoning bylaw amendment application, I mentioned this before, um, it will be taken up by city council at their meeting on uh, Tuesday, July 13th, June, uh, July 13th, at City Hall at six o'clock. And uh, Ms. Reeve, our connection to council will be presenting the application or explaining it and providing the information from this meeting. And uh, if you wish to be further informed, I would suggest to uh, Mr. Leonard and Ms. Irwin that they certainly can be present at that meeting and uh, will be allowed to speak if they wish. Okay, well, thank you very much. This uh, brings an end to this particular uh, application. Thank you very much for your uh, kind attention and comments. Um, thank, I guess, thank, uh, you, everyone. Uh, thank you. You're very welcome. Okay, we'll go on now to the next item on the agenda. That's past decision updates. First of all, uh, dealing with the property and 214 Church yeah. Street. Thanks, Any comments Thanks, on the update uh, from the planner, our own? Mr. Chairman, uh, on, on past decisions, uh, file Z3-2021, 214 Church Street, uh, Mr. Alan Campbell, that went to council on June 1st and, and was approved. Uh, it is still within its appeal period, which will close later this week. File A5-2021, 23 Bennett Street, Mr. Andrew Plummer, uh, that minor variance uh, has passed its 20 day appeal period and is final. Okay, thank you. Did you comment on the one on Bennett Street? Did I miss that? I, I did, Mr. Chair. It, it passed it, uh, its 20 day approval period and is, is now final. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anything else, uh, Colleen, that you'd like to bring forth at this time? Uh, no, nothing. Okay, well, I guess the uh, next meeting is scheduled for July 21st at 4.30. Any changes to that, Colleen? Well, we have uh, already three severance applications and one minor variance application and a possibly another minor variance application to come. So it'll be a busy enough meeting. Okay, and uh, Tanya? I won't be available for that meeting. I'm actually away. Well, I'm on holidays, not saying I'm going to be away, but... Okay, as long as we have a forum. Uh, and anybody else have a problem with that date? Maybe? I might. <laughs> um, I'll see what I can do. Um, 
it might be difficult for me to join. I'm not sure I'll have a, um, yeah. a, a connection, a reliable connection. Okay. Uh, Bob, are you okay for that date? I'm okay for that date. And I hope that we can go back into council by then. <laughs> well, so do I. Christine, you okay for that date? Okay, it looks like we're going to have a form, a quorum anyways with three. And uh, and then Marie and uh, Tanya, um, uh, Tanya, you can't make it. Marie, you can get back to the planner if you can or not. But it looks like we'll be okay with a quorum, I believe. Is that correct? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, we could change it. We haven't sent anything out yet. We could change it to the following week of July 30th. July 28th? Oh, no, no, it would, yeah, it would be to July 28th. I would be available for that. You'd be available on the 28th? Yep. I believe I would be too. It's pension day. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay, 20 let's... years away from that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'll never get there. <laughs> Okay, Colleen. If I make it uh, through this real estate season, I may be there on the 28th. <laughs> okay, are we going to look at changing it to the 28th? Uh, is that okay with you and with Bob as well? Yeah, that would be okay with me. Okay, well, let's change it to the 28th then. Okay. Okay. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, anything else that members of the committee would like to bring up or speak upon? If not, looking for a meeting to, uh, excuse me, a motion to adjourn. Christine, seconded by Maddie Jose. All in favor? Harry, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, first time that I got into little technical difficulties. Somebody just <laughs> came in with an app. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's the way it goes, and I think we've got it done. And uh, Colleen, uh, do you think we'll be in council next on the 28th? Um, I, I, we'll be in step two. So well, possibly step three. So I can't maybe yeah. let you know as we get go along. Um, yeah. So uh, I would think maybe we have a limited, you know, maybe if like we did last time you and Bob came yeah. in and, you know, if everybody else is comfortable with the Zoom, yeah. we'll still have a hybrid. So whatever, um, you know, I'll let you know. But if you still prefer okay. to Zoom in, you can still Zoom okay, in. Okay, very good. We are allowed to come in. We'll keep you posted. Okay. <laughs> yes, because things are ever changing. Okay. Well, thank yes. you very much, uh, members of the committee. It was uh, certainly uh, an inter not an entertaining, but a very educational evening, mm -hmm. and uh, and a lot of work was done by our planning department here for these two applications. So we thank you for, very much for that, uh, and uh, look forward to see how council is going to handle this. Thank you very much, and good evening.